All right, this is a review for Ralph Peters' uh, historical fiction novel, Darkness at Chancellorsville. And down here, it's got a subtitle or whatever you want to call this, a novel of Stonewall Jackson's triumph and tragedy. Now, you would think, having read that, that this book would focus primarily on Thomas Jackson, also known as Stonewall Jackson, and it doesn't. So I was like, what? Uh, this book has both a strength and a weakness, and that is the fact that it doesn't really focus on one particular character. It jumps around a lot. So you get a lot of different perspectives of a lot of different people on both the Confederate and the Union side. And if I had to say, I think probably it's a 60-40 split, so I think probably 60% of the novel focuses on the Union generals and about 40% on the Confederate generals. At least that's how it felt to me. And it really doesn't feel like Stonewall Jackson is a primary character. He feels like he's a secondary character. Um, if I had to say there's a primary character in this book, I think it's probably fighting Joe Hooker. You know, General Hooker, who took over the Army of the Potomac following general burnside's debacle at fredericksburg so we've got joe here and and it jumps around okay so you have like a chapter from joe hooker's perspective then you'll get like one from from um sedgwick over there in fredericksburg it's kind of like on the eastern side of this battle you know Kind of not part of the main battle, but off to, it's like a little side battle over here. You know, you'll have a chapter from um, Howard's 11th Corps, you know, General Howard. Uh, it just kind of jumps around a lot. A lot of different people. You know, Dan Butterfield. And on the, the Confederate side, you'll like have a chapter about Robert E. Lee, and then it'll be like a chapter of Stonewall Jackson, then... You know, get a chapter from Jubal Early. It just kind of does this, where it just jumps from general to general to general. And uh, jumps around the different parts of the battlefield. So it's both a strength and a weakness. It's nice because you get a lot of different stuff going on. You don't stay in any one place too long. But it's also kind of scattered. And you're like, oh man, we're all over the place. Where, where am I now? And who's talking? So it can kind of disorient you a little bit. But it's a very good book. I really enjoyed it. Now, it's as a point of comparison, I think you compare it probably to Shara's novels. Um, Michael Shara's The Killer Angels, I still think, is a better book than this. But I really enjoyed this more than anything I've read from Jeff Shara. And I think this book is a lot more gritty and... You know, it doesn't shy away. It doesn't romanticize uh, warfare. It gives you the blood and the guts. People getting shot in the face. Um, people getting limbs blown off. People getting legs blown off. Horses getting legs blown off. Uh, people taking pieces of shrapnel in the skull. And I mean, it's it's pretty brutal. You know, they're firing double canister shot. And it's not bloodless. Now, if you don't know what canister shot is, it's like a canister shot's like a coffee can, and it's full of like balls, you know, like ball bearings. And then you stick that thing in the can and you shoot it, and it essentially turns the cannon into a giant shotgun. And they're firing these things into lines of men, and it's, you know, going three ranks deep, just filling everybody up with these big old holes, blowing them to smithereens. Um, pretty gnarly, grisly stuff. As you can assume, there's going to be, you know, pieces of people all over the place. And you're going to get that in here. So, yeah, I would give this a definite thumbs up. I'm looking forward to reading the other books that he's written. I have all of them on my shelf in there. Um, one more thing about this book that I kind of found... Uh, I'm having, I'm tongue-tied. One more thing about this book that I found kind of puzzling was this uh, 
opening up the prologue of the book, okay? They get the prologue here, which is the Battle of Kelly's Ford, which was a cavalry battle fought on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, 1863, between Fitzhugh Lee's Calvary and General Averill of the of the uh, Union. And it doesn't really feel like it belongs. You know, it's kind of like tacked on because the only character that's in this, this fight here that shows up in the rest of the book is Jeb Stewart. So, yeah, I'm kind of perplexed. I guess he just wanted to write about the Battle of Kelly's Ford, but it doesn't really feel like it belongs in the book. And honestly, you could have completely cut that out. And, uh, I mean, you could skip it and you wouldn't be missing anything. It's 41 pages, okay? And it doesn't have any bearing on the rest of the novel. So I don't know why it's here. It feels like, yeah, why is it here? But, you know, whatever. Um, this was an enjoyable read. Like I said, definite thumbs up. If you're a Civil War enthusiast, if you like historical fiction, if you like Civil War novels, uh, check this one out. It was pretty darn good. All right, that's it. Oh, one more thing. It looks like the poll winner for what I should read next, I put up a poll, looks like it's going to be the Robots of Dawn by Isaac Asimov, and it's not even close. Um, it's a blowout. Second place is so far behind. I don't think, unless there's like going to be five people that all vote in the next 24 hours and vote for, you know, one of the other books. I just don't think it's, it's going to matter. You know, it, it looks like Robots of Dawn is the winner, so I'll be reading that next. And then uh, we'll see where we go from there, so... Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.